Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're watching the Sacred Study Show. I'm your host, Fukas Mirza, and as always, we're joined by Sheikh Nuruddin Rashid. Before we get started, please do remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And uh, the topic for today is the role of dreams in Islam. So, with that, Sheikh, I'll hand it over to you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Rabbi Yassir wa In Ya Karim. We'll begin with a hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6989, where Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ar-ru'ya as-saliha, juz'un min sittin wa arba'een, min sittatin wa arba'een, juz'an min al nabuwa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a good dream is a share of a 46th share from prophethood meaning it's the hadith is telling us it's as if it's a 46th of prophethood this is an important hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in this hadith we understand that a person can receive guidance through dreams there's no doubt about this. Dreams are mentioned in the Holy Quran. Dreams are mentioned in multiple hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And this really summarizes. Um, and it's important to also note and point out that dreams often require an interpretation. Dreams aren't, you know, simply the way you see them. The, the meaning is already, always clear and apparent. Sometimes the dream requires interpretation. However, that's not really our subject for today. Today, we want to speak about the issue of um, how dreams are used and promoted and propagated in Muslim societies. <clears throat> this is a very, very important issue. Um, and there is a lot of misunderstanding. And today, inshallah, I want to try to clarify some of that. The first thing to say about dreams after the Mubarak hadith of the Prophet وسلم, the scholars unanimously said that dreams are not a hujjah. Dreams are not an evidence in Islam. Okay, Anybody who's uh, studied Islam, even to a basic level, you'll know that when the scholars speak about evidences in Islam, they will mention Quran, they will mention hadith of the Prophet وسلم, they will mention ijma', they will mention qiyas. Bismillah. But um, they will not mention uh, dreams as evidence in Islam. Dreams are not a hujjah. Dreams are not evidence in Islam. So that means that a person can't uh, see a dream and then use that to establish a legal ruling or use that to uh, say such and such a thing is encouraged in Islam unless that thing is already established in Quran and Hadith. Such and such a thing is frowned upon in Islam unless that thing is already established in Quran and Hadith. Okay, um, And regarding this, uh, Qadi Ayyad, rahimallahu ta'ala, he spoke about this issue in his commentary in of a uh, Sahih Muslim. He said that the Prophet, uh, even if a person sees the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a dream, this will not allow him to establish a new sunnah or to negate an established sunnah. And he said this is by the ijma' of the ulama, by the consensus of the ulama. So this is incredibly important. Okay, The scholars unanimously agree that dreams have khair in them, dreams have barakah, and especially, mashallah, to see a dream of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what could be better uh, in terms of a dream than seeing the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, especially a clear a vision of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a, uh, an interaction with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a great gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this ummah that even though uh, you know, we don't have the opportunity to physically meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when we travel to Medina Sharif. Um, we can see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in our dreams and every Muslim uh, should and does have this desire in his heart to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But this is important, he said, even if it's a dream of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you cannot establish a new Sunnah. Okay, you can't say, oh, this is now recommended in Islam. Okay, and Imam al-Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he uh, spoke about this issue too. He quoted uh, Imam 
Qadi Ayyad Rahimallahu Ta'ala and he explained the same issue that dreams cannot be used to contradict something which is already established or uh, negate something that's already established or establish something new and he went further and he explained that this does not go against the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that I quoted at the beginning. Okay? This understanding of the ulama doesn't go against that because the Prophet وسلم, didn't say in that hadith that when you see a dream and you see in it the Prophet وسلم, for example, this is part of Quran and hadith. This forms part of the revelation given to the Prophet وسلم. So Imam Nawawi, he went a little bit further. The point is the scholars are in complete agreement that dreams are not a hujjah. Therefore, you cannot use dreams to establish something new, propagate something new. So what is the role of dreams? Okay, we're going into a bit more detail later on, but basically, or at a very basic level, to uh, you know give the general rule, dreams are generally for the individual. Okay, they're for that particular uh, person. And as the ulama mentioned, if a person sees the Mubarak Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a dream, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is encouraging this person to do something which is already established in the Sharia, established in the Islamic uh, teachings. The Prophet ﷺ encourages him to do such a thing, then uh, this should uh, be seen as even more emphatic for that particular individual. Okay, that he should take this issue even more seriously because not only is there the general encouragement established in Quran and Hadith, he's mashallah seen the Prophet ﷺ in a dream, but again, it's for him as an individual. Now, nah. Sheikh, some people say that you know they saw a certain practice in their dream and they were told to go propagate that is that something you should be doing you should be going out and propagating it yeah th this is important as i said normally dreams should be kept are they, they are there for that particular individual and the reason we have this rule is otherwise it opens up the doors to a lot of misguidance and essentially people can you know just make up dreams um uh, to prove or disprove anything, be it a religious teaching or be it a, you know, a, a matter which is a little bit more specific to a particular individual. And I want to quote here Imam Muslim rahimahullah ta'ala in his uh, Sahih, in his Hadith collection. He said this regarding Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa You know, a lot of people are really shocked and surprised. And yes, they should be shocked and surprised that there were people in this ummah who fabricated Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So if people were willing to fabricate Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa do we think they're not going to fabricate dreams? There are people out there when a'udhu billah, they do these kind of things. Now, I'm speaking in general terms. Okay, I am not saying it is okay, fine for a Muslim to say to another Muslim, you are lying about your dream. I'm not speaking about that. We're speaking about uh, general guidance, Okay, the general rules in Islam, what's considered to be part of our or what feeds into our religious teaching and what doesn't feed into our religious teaching. What is considered an evidence in Islam and what's not considered an evidence in Islam. I don't want anybody to misunderstand this and use what I'm saying here to accuse particular individuals of lying and making things up. But the point is, it is important for us to know this, that people even fabricated the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. Imam Muslim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, I've never seen righteous people um, lying more about any matter than hadith which is shocking you know why would so-called righteous people be lying about hadith they fabricated hadith and obviously I can't go on a, a, a tangent uh, with regards to hadith and hadith fabrications and such things but the point is it's well established it's well known by the ulama that there were people who even you know people with good intentions, if you like, who fabricated the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But it's a lack of knowledge, it's a lack of understanding. Okay, You cannot fabricate the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam irrespective of what your intentions are. But Alhamdulillah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala 
always blesses this ummah so it remains on the right path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, raised from the ummah scholars who identified these hadith fabrications, pointed them out. So the ummah knows that these are fabrications or the educated amongst the ummah knows these fabrications. So my point is if people are going to fabricate hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and attribute hadith to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are we going to be surprised and shocked when people make up dreams? And with people, somebody says, oh, I saw this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he told me this in the dream, told me this in the dream and such things. If they're going to fabricate the actual Mubarak words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do we not think they, they may do this? So this door, this is why the scholars say things like this. I mean, first of all, it's a matter of evidence. But secondly, it's so clear that if we open up this door that, you know, anybody can... Um, you know, say they saw a dream and just propagate it and then that becomes an evidence in Islam and that feeds into what is considered halal and haram and wajib and such things, then it just opens up the doors to completely changing our deen. And this is the beauty of our religion. Alhamdulillah, all other religions out there, they've been changed. Okay, Generally, they change with culture. Whenever culture changes, their, their religions change. Okay. Whereas our religion, mashallah, it, it, it has some flexibility where it adapts to certain circumstances, but essentially our religion remains the same. And it's because of teachings like this that we it does remain the same because we don't give license to people to just say anything they like to change the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is very, very important for us to understand, uh, to see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one's dream is barakah, is mubarak. But generally it should be kept to yourself and also it should be understood it is not an evidence, it is not a dalil in Islam. Another issue I see, Sheikh, is that, you know, it can lead to contradiction between a couple of people where one person could see one thing and another yeah. person could see another thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the, this, uh, and again, this uh, all feeds back into that uh, initial point I made that the scholars, they spoke about, you know, that these are not evidences. Um, and yes, you know, you will find people from Ahl Sunnah, mashallah, who will say, oh, we saw a dream and, you know, in this dream we saw that we, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us we're on, on, on haqq, we're on the truth, okay? You have people from, uh, that we as Ahl Sunnah consider to be misguided, consider to be astray. They'll say the same thing. They'll say, we saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us that we're on the haqq. You see what I mean? Um, or even within Ahl Sunnah. Okay, sometimes you have differences of opinion, even within Ahlul Sunnah, somebody who has this belief, you know, it's, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that this belief or this practice is right. Okay, somebody else with completely the opposite view, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that this belief, this practice is right. You see, or, you know, people will uh, say, I saw a dream and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told me this and predict something that's going to happen in the future, for example, and then it doesn't happen. Okay. Uh, or somebody else says, or I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, you know, predicted completely the opposite. It leads to contradictions. It leads to these kind of issues and these kind of problems. So, again, this is why the general rule is that you should keep your dreams to yourself. Now, sometimes people may say, look, I saw a dream in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded me, told me to spread this in the ummah. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Obviously, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told somebody to spread something, I'm not going to sit here and say, don't spread it. Okay. But what I will say is, this is at the very least unlikely. Okay. This is at the very least unlikely. Because our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa doesn't teach us things which are going to cause religious problems in the ummah. Okay. And open up the doors to fitna and fasad. Okay, because again, you know, every second person can then say, well, yeah, I understand that normally you're supposed to keep your dreams to yourself. But I was specifically told by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to release my dream to the Ummah. Okay, once all of these things we're speaking about, it opens up the doors to those. And we don't believe our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, is going to do such a thing, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad. So again, you know, uh, these things are unlikely. It's unlikely that somebody sees a dream and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, right, tell everybody this because it leads to these kind of contradictions, leads to these, this kind of misunderstanding. You hear it, especially recently with the coronavirus. We've had a lot of people claiming to have seen dreams of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to us that, you know, tell the Ummah this and this will protect them from the coronavirus and this will protect 
protect them from the coronavirus. One that, uh, you know, was going around <laughs> fairly early on during the pandemic. Um, everybody open up the Quran that you have in, in your house and you'll find therein a hair of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bismillah. And dip that in water and drink it and you'll be pre protected by the coronavirus. Now again, <clears throat> whether it's a protection or not, it, uh, you know, that's not my major concern with this particular uh, uh, dream that was being spread. My major concern with this one is if you open up the Quran and there's hair in it, whose hair is this likely to be? Your own. How dare any Muslim, any person look at his own hair? and claim that this is the Mubarak, blessed hair of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has sanctity, okay? Impure people like us, sinful people like us, okay? People like us with all kinds of shortcomings, okay? And to attribute something of ours to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is this not the height of disrespect for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to be careful with these kind of things. When it comes to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are protective, we have ghayra, okay? We should be very careful what we attribute to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is noble, is mubarak. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the beloved of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is munawwar. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is elevated. Don't attribute lowly things to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But again, people hear that and that's it. Oh, Somebody had a dream. Oh, that's it. it. Must be true. It must be haq is treated as if it's absolute haq, absolute truth. Go back to what the ulama said. The ulama said dreams are not hujja. Dreams are not an absolute proof. Dreams are not haq. Okay, meaning uh, they don't establish absolute facts. That's what I mean by dreams are not haq. Okay, not the fact that a person can't can't see a dream and it can have some guidance in it. I quoted the hadith at the beginning. Of course, it can have some guidance in it, but you cannot use it to spread something as a religious fact, and especially something like that. Okay, and we come across these things all of the time. You know, uh, I saw a dream. My sheikh, I was the prophet told me, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, my sheikh is the greatest sheikh in the world. Somebody else says, I saw a dream. The prophet told me, my sheikh is the greatest sheikh in the world. What are we doing with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa taala? Now, uh, you know, uh, somebody sees a dream, you know, my madrasa or my people, the people I associate with, the group I associate with, the dawah organization I associate with, we're the one on truth. Okay, I've heard people quote dreams that, you know, the sheikh said, I saw a dream and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to me that I'm the only one who truly loves him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nobody else truly loves him. You hear dreams, people uh, spread dreams that, oh, we saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a dream and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us nobody's Hajj is accepted other than this one person. You know, Subhanallah. We do this with the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Any Rabba, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to have hope in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Our, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not going to take us to despair. Okay, but again, people hear these kind of things and they take them to just be absolute facts. No, what's fact? Is what's in Quran and what's in Hadith. Okay, and what we're told in Quran and what we're told in Hadith is, for example, with Hajj, we should do Hajj according to the Sunnah with the greatest sincerity uh, we possibly can, and then hope for acceptance from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, not despair. Now, um, what are other problems that can arise from the rain dream, Sheikh? Now, there are, you know, some of the problems I've mentioned. There are others as well. And again, you know, as an ummah, because most people are not very well educated with regards to Islam, they don't understand uh, these kind of things. But I've come across situations where somebody will oppress other people, will commit crimes, will abuse people, and then will get found out. And rather than, you know, being brought to justice, or at the very least, made to feel that look, I need to stop this, this is wrong, taken to task in some way, um, it's just so easy for people to, somebody to claim, no, I saw a dream, and in that dream I was shown that this person is innocent. Okay, I've come across these situations, <clears throat> and often this is with, uh, you know, as you can imagine, with religious people, religious figures. Some, you know, religious scholar or you know well-known person for one reason or another uh, you know at times people even in such positions 
do things which are wrong, do things which are prohibited, do things which are uh, oppressive, do things which are abusive. Okay, and they found out, and you know the 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 the, uh, the information spreads, and people start distancing themselves, and then suddenly we find you no, know, this person had a dream, and in that dream he was shown the sheikh is completely innocent, and this is Islam. Is that how Islam is? And our Prophet ﷺ told us when somebody does something wrong, you know, they should be corrected. They should be guided to the right path. If it's a crime, then we have the Islamic legal system to deal with it. Okay? But no, rather what we're going to say is, no, 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 such and such has seen a dream, it's all right. Okay? What's he going to do then? He's going to carry on with his oppression and his abuses of, uh, abuses of power and harming people and oppressing people. Our deen is not like this. No. Um, I came across, you know, uh, other situations where there was a particular sheikh and, you know, he had really bad practices, a lot of abuse, uh, even wife beating and those kind of things, severe wife beating and such things. And again, you know, people found out about these kind of things and they said, uh, you know, we're going to, we, we don't want to associate with this person. You know, we found out these terrible things about him once again. Somebody sees a dream. I saw in a dream that this person is perfectly innocent. Hadn't done anything wrong. No. Finally, Chef, what is the correct methodology with regards to narrating dreams? Yeah. So with regards to narrating dreams, the best and, and the soundest methodology is when you see a dream, especially, mashallah, a Mubarak dream of the Prophet wasallam. this is a huge blessing. Okay, I'm not saying in any way whatsoever that dreams have no meaning. I started by quoting the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. This is a huge blessing. And inshallah, there's an abundance of guidance there. It's for you as an individual. Okay, Or you might, may see a dream relating to a particular person or a particular small group of people. Okay, You should tell those people. Okay. You should tell those people, inshallah ta'ala. This is mentioned in hadith the Prophet ﷺ spoke about. A person sees a dream or a dream is seen. Uh, regarding him okay so yes uh, if it's just regarding yourself keep it to yourself generally speaking i'm not speaking about haram by the way i'm not saying it's absolutely haram how dare you tell a single person i'm speaking about general advice and general guidance to keep this ummah on the haq okay so um you know a person sees a dream see it as a blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, especially if it's a dream of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Make abundant shukr to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Hope for an increase inshaAllah Ta'ala If it involves another person or not other people You know, inform those particular people But this idea of, you know, spreading it throughout the Ummah And introducing new practices And, you know, I saw a dream Whoever doesn't forward this dua to so many people This is going to happen to him This is going to happen to him And whoever does, then he's going to get this and this this is not the sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't threaten the ummah like this. Okay, you must do this, otherwise you're going to, uh, you know, lose everything, lose your wealth, lose your health, lose your family and such things. There are videos, messages, etc. that go around with these kind of things all of the time. Okay, that's not what we should be doing as an ummah. Yes, no doubt about it that... Um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep it to yourself. If it involves others, uh, speak to them about it. But we need to understand that dreams are not a hujjah, as the scholars said. They're not to be spread around as if they are an evidence in Islam. No. And uh, as I mentioned before, a lot of abuse takes place in this kind of way. People do things which are wrong and they know that even if they're found out, it won't be a problem because they'll just have somebody state that they saw a dream or they themselves will say, I saw a dream. The Prophet Sallallahu told me that I'm, uh, I need, I'm to tell the people I'm completely innocent and all of these accusations against me are false accusations. You see, we need uh, to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and close doors to fitna, to fasad, to misguidance, to these kind of things.